So tonight I've decided to compare these two telescopes. The refractor against the Maxitov. The Maxitov is 6 inch and the refractor 3.5 inch. Let's go and compare. Okay, I'm now comparing and testing two telescopes. This is a Skywatcher SkyMax 150 Maxitov. And this is the Skywatcher Evo Star 19 and uh, 19.90, uh, 3.5 inch telescope, refractor telescope. It's a achromatic telescope, robust, and that's a Maxitov. And so let's uh, compare. The first thing you notice focus easily, that one comes with the extension tube. This one I just use a, its own. Uh, draw to you so no problem come in focus I'm using a uh, Japanese style which means that there is no star diagonal the first thing is that the image in this is not as sharp as this I just brought it out and I didn't let it to cool down to to the ambient temperature so because the tube is closed the image has turbulence in it you don't see it, but you see it in a form that the image is not very clear yet. You can see Jupiter bands, but in this one, even with the 26 millimeter, it's very clear. That one with the yeah, 10 millimeter aspheric has Fibonacci is not clear. And um, I'm using this uh, observatory tent and using this to exclude the street life when I'm inside. And observe. So let's put the 10 millimeter on this one and compare. Okay, I have looked through this 10 millimeter, and when I compare it with this 10 millimeter, the image size is very similar, very close together. Uh, this one has slight chromatic aberration. You can see a little bit of blue around the disk of the planet. Uh, the clarity of the two belts uh, uh, is very similar to this uh, Maxitov probably slightly slightly a little bit this one is better but I'm going now to test it again on this at this time okay from within this tent I can now look at the planet Jupiter with the Maxitov 150 uh, this is sky max and with a 10 millimeter aspheric I can say that the image is in this color free uh, the belts of Jupiter are more clear although we are now after a heavy day of rain and uh, kind of strong winds so the turbulence in the atmosphere usually at this time is high the jet stream above the in the higher atmosphere actually distorts a lot of things but the image is clear in this one better than the evo star 90. so if i want to observe and see better i will use this no chromatic aberration at all it's pure clean the only thing that i can say is that the image size is equal in both of them almost but this one uh, has a slightly more clear image I have not changed to SLV 6mm, uh, Wixen SLV 6mm eyepiece. The image is, uh, the edge of the Jupiter is not sharp. The belts are a little bit uh, fuzzy, but you can see details, you know, it's not, I don't say that you don't see, but it's not as good as what I saw in the 10mm, although it is a little bit magnified. So I may go now for a star guide, the 8mm, just to see how it is with that. Oh, perfect! A star guide, the 8mm. It shows perfect the image of the planet. Everything perfect. Round, edges are sharp, the details on the planet's uh, cloud belts are sharp. Really good. Uh, this is a magical. No, 7 8 millimeter is always a good magical eyepiece uh, number. 
you use it and that will give you most telescope really gives you the best results h millimeter star guider on this really good this is a sky watcher sky max 150 so it's a max sort of yeah, chromatic aberration free and everything nice and good it's like a 120 uh, uh, ed ds pro uh, sky watcher upper chromatic telescope so really good i'm impressed let me just immediately go and change it to the Evo star This 8mm star guide is a magical eyepiece. Image is clear, beautiful, sharp. And 10mm sweep only was not as good as this. And you can see a lot of details. Um, which one I prefer? I think both of them are nice. This one is slightly smaller, the image scale is smaller smaller so magnification is definitely less in this one with this uh, not with this eye piece I just put it for stopping the air going inside with the star guider on this sky watcher here yeah. the image is really better bigger slightly chromatic aberration free but this one is just, just so beautiful just background of the sky is velvety color and the planet shines the, all the details I can see in this, I can see in this at the same time. This is just a little bit bigger. But which one I prefer? I cannot really choose. Both of them are good. <laughs> I mean, if you get a sky watcher, any of these telescopes, both of them are sky watcher. Get a star guider 8mm also. For both of them is good. Perfect. <laughs> On Jupiter, which is a really sensitive target for, you know, assessing the um, all the you know image quality of the is two different styles of telescope one max set of and one refractor in this one you see a slightly chromatic aberration not much uh, with the star guide especially with this one absolutely no chromatic aberration beautiful clear and uh, the price of that of course is uh, around three times of this so you make your choice this one I prefer it, I love it, it's light, it has wide angle, you can use it for versatile, it's very solid. And this one is very heavy, I have not used it as much as this one probably. <laughs> the image is perfect, if you cannot afford the upper chromatic, this is the telescope to go. And with, this, um, with the focal reducer, like Celestron 0 0.63 times focal reducer, it practically can become a, a you know, wide, wide field telescope especially if you go straight through straight through I recommend it I've noticed now that all this uh, star diagonals introduce some uh, some actually chromatic aberration you will be surprised yeah they do <laughs> and also they reduce the clarity of the image and everything uh, for planets definitely I will go for this and both of them are nice I love both of them this is bigger, so it needs a little bit more uh, handling. This one comes with its own mount. You get only two with this, and the finder, not this one. This is a big one. I've attached it. They give it 30 millimeter one, I think. And uh, yeah, so as a package, I think this is perfect. The Evo Star is perfect as a package. Just get a <laughs> ED. <laughs> Star got the ED like this. You will miss something if you don't. If you, don't you, you will not understand what I'm saying unless you look through one of this. This is magical. <laughs> Velvet clear background, the sky, and the planet shining through it. It's like these old paintings in these French books, you know, Flammarion and others, completely painted beautifully black. And this is the 8 millimeter star guider, and this is the 12 millimeter star guider on this Maxatov and this. Refractor, both of them is called watcher 150 millimeter, 90 millimeter. Okay, the image is very good in both of them. This is pure chromatic aberration free image, and this is a slight chromatic aberration with the tinge of yellow, very faint at the terminator or the boundary of the dark red, bright. 
Uh, which one I prefer, the image quality? I prefer this one. And the image quality. This is good. This is better. But if you want to buy, of course, this comes as a package, whole package. You can receive a tripod, you receive a quadruple mount for it, and you receive the eyepiece and the whole thing. This one just uh, comes with a, as I mentioned, just optical tube assembly. So as a package, this is the better option. And with this one, you need mount and uh, diagonal and everything. And I think diagonal they give you also. And uh, yeah, smaller uh, finder scope. So um, both of them are good. This is a uh, almost like apochromatic. This one is really good refractor and very clear, especially at the moon. Very nice, both of them. Uh, the eight minutes even the magnification is left less than that, so that is giving a bigger image. But pointing that to the target is difficult, more difficult than this. This is a stretch forward. That one has a narrow field of view. Of course, it needs a little bit thermal equilibrium. The meniscus in front of it also gets fogged and get a little bit, you know, mist and the condensation in it. This one doesn't have such a problem, as far as human, if, unless it is really wet in the atmosphere. So both of them are good. This one is better. This is the view to the Skywatch Evo Star 90. Okay, as you may see, when you use the camera to um, video the moon, for example, it's not always the highest magnification the better because anyway um, it may you know camera will not be able to, to cope with the magnification as much as your eyes can adapt easily to it i'm concerned that the, the image in both of them are sharp which one i prefer both of them are good i prefer this one a little bit a slight less magnification with this one the same eyepiece gives more magnification uh, Visually, it is all right, but with the video, it doesn't look that, uh, you know, that much better. So I prefer a less magnification. Probably a 12 millimeter would be here better. And now I'm with the 12 millimeter ED Star Guider. And the max of 150 Skywatch Skymax. The focus can be sharper, but I cannot do that because I'm holding the camera. Cannot make it really any sharper. Sometimes you feel this, you need three hands. This is 16 millimeter Nirvana under Skywatch Evost. Perfect image. Can really reach very sharp focus all across. So Maxitov, uh, in this case, I don't think that is as good as the Evost refractor. 16 millimeter definitely gives you a really good fit of the full disc of the moon. Beautiful, pleasant. I go for the Evo Star on this with the 16 millimeter eyepiece. For example, if you have a 25 millimeter, you can also borrow it two times and just reach 12 and a half. Will be a little bit uh, bigger than this the image, but uh, not bad actually. Quite good. Yeah, I prefer an Evo Star with the 60mm Nirvana here. Any eyepiece in this range probably will give you the full moon, full disc of the moon visible, full face of the moon I should say, 
flat earth first now we say that the moon is also a disk that's just a language our language is not very rich in that sense our language is probably you can say that it belong to archaic times antiquity when, when people <laughs> use this kind of terms for describing the celestial bodies and see some in the inside this tent practically the light pollution doesn't bother me directly into my eye but of course of course the sky background can be a problem but I'm looking at the bright objects like planets like Jupiter and the moon so it's not a problem here but the noises of the light on, on you know scattered light from the corner of your eye or anything inside this tent is completely non-existent I, I'm not bothered by the light at all the only light is the moon and Jupiter and I can move this tent, it's very easy to move it around the only problem with the microscope is that when the condensation forms on it as you can see here um, okay, observing with this telescope is nice, is pleasurable, you enjoy it. There is only one point, your time will be limited because of the condensation forming on the meniscus. So, if you can use a dew heater or the weather is not that damp, uh, you will have a really good time with this, cheaper than uh, any uh, refractor of upper chromatic nature otherwise your time will be limited to one hour one and a half hour then you have to cover it like what I did and then again come back and use it so you have to make your choice it's a good uh, you know, telescope it's usable it's definitely cheap and definitely powerful and chromatic aberration free, the most important thing.